back again. And now we're looking at, I'm, I have to explain before I get to David, how what's the origin of the problem. See where I'm moving the calculator? Our boy, Abram, 490 years after 2046 is only 2536. But the exodus is going to take place in 2666. So how does God bridge that? That's what we're, we're getting into. All right. There's somebody between Abram and Moses who had to get a 490 extending the time. Or there wouldn't have been an exodus. There couldn't have been an exodus because time would have ended. Not only that, but... Because he super matures in 2046, then 2100 plus 2046, because that's the whole time allotment for the Jews, takes you to 4146. Okay? Messiah has to come and die by then. Come and die by then. Because that's the end of the time allotment for the Jews. Now there's a 40, 54 year credit owed the Gentiles. So now we have to add, it's really 53.5 but rounded to 54. That gets you to 4200. That is the end of time when the millennium was supposed to start. At the time of Abram and even at the time of Moses. That was the schedule. So the question was, okay, if Messiah has to come and die by then, when is he born? Well, the other problem was is that you got our boy Jacob being born 2106, which is right here, the right line for it, being born 2106 in the 60th year when, you know, when Isaac was 60 years old, Jacob is born. Jacob and Esau, but Jacob is the one carrying the line of Messiah. So, that deadline there was 2000. Okay, so now, it's not too hard to figure this out, and it actually is in the Talmud, too. 4146 was supposed to be the end of Jewish time before the Gentile credit had to play in order for the millennium to begin on time at 4200 from Adam's fall. You get all that from Psalm 90. I've already done the Psalm 90 videos in Vimeo. Just look at the Psalm 90 channel by Bray now. Okay? In order, therefore, to get to the end of Jewish time in those days, if he has to be born in 4106, which you're always going to use to convert to our BCAD, the Messiah is going to be 40 years old when he dies. That was the schedule. That schedule is actually preserved in the Talmud. It's in Sanhedrin 97 through 99. So the Jews did use to know this. Okay, I don't know when those portions of the Sanhedrin were first written, but that's where it is. This whole business about 2100 being truncated to 2000 is also in that same section. So they did use to know what I'm telling you, but they just got it garbled. All right? And it's based on the fact that Jacob is born 2106, not 2100. Which would be okay because Isaac was born the year that Abram super matured. So we're just going to start from that. That's okay. But there's only 40 years left after that. After two, you add 2,000 to it, there's only 40 years left after that. And that's the end of Jewish time. Because our boy, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong line. Jacob is born then. Jacob was born the same year that Men, Men Tuhotep started. Okay, these are the BC dates that, that on the left, and then the year of the world dates are on the right, birth and death. <clears throat> so 
what we call BC in the Old Testament always has to subtract. To, you go down this column, and if you always want to convert it to BC, you go down that column and you subtract 4106 to get BC. Because the Bible uses that as its schedule until David, and then it changes the schedule because something happened during David's life to change that schedule. So first, okay, it probably should have been 4100, and scholars in the Middle Ages were using that, all right? But it's not based on that. It's based on this time credit that the scholars don't know about, even until now, of Abraham maturing 54 years early, all right? And... 2,000 years after um, he super matures, 2,100 years after he super matures is 4,146. And at the same time, Christ has to be born 2,000 years in order to go and pay and die and make up the credit. He has to be born 2,000 years after Jacob. And the Bible dates track to this. That's how I learned it. Okay, and you know, you can play with the numbers all you want. That's the worksheet shows you all the calculations, and you can do what you want with them. All right, so now we come into the problem of Egypt. Because if, if, sorry, if Abram's maturing here in 2536, his 490 runs out, time will end. Okay, well, that's before Moses is even born. Well, let's see, when was Moses born? Moses was born 25, yeah, it's before he's born. There wouldn't have been a Moses. So somebody between Abram and Moses had to super mature. Or there'd be no Moses, which means there'd be no Exodus. So who was it? Now, you have to play with the numbers. I learned this by doing the numbers, okay? The guy who got the the, five, the 490 is Joseph. That's why I've highlighted him in blue. The year that he got it was 2176, the year he was enslaved, okay? So that would be... B.C. 1930. Well, that was when he was born. 2176. So, in 2176 from Adam's fall, Joseph got a 490. And if you take your calculator, all right, he was born 2160. So, he's only 17. He's just barely 17 here. All right, because you can see he was born 2160. When um, Jacob was 60. Yeah. Jake, well, not quite. Jacob was 54. Okay, so Joseph, if you take 2176 and you add 490 to it, that takes you to the year of the Exodus, which is right here. That's the year of the Exodus from Adam's fall. Okay, it equates to our 1440 BC, which is, you know, commonly commonly said by scholars until I don't know, the last 50 years or so they've been jacking around with it. But the most common date and the Bible hubs to that. All the dates fit if you use 1440 BC as the Exodus date. All the Bible dates hub to that. That's how I learned all this. Is I started with the Exodus and I worked backward and then I worked forward. They all hub to this. Okay, so that means that it was the guy in between Abram and Moses was Joseph. Now, it sounds kind of weird to say that Joseph got his 490 at only 17 years old, but Christ was super mature at 12. All right, so it's possible. All right. The other argument you can make is, well, it's not really because 
Joseph super matured is because he was enslaved in Egypt and it was either his dad or his grandfather Isaac and it's attributed to him. What? Well, kind of hard it's hard for it to make sense since this is a bad event. All right, this is a bad event. Why would the 490 be triggered at the enslavement of Joseph if it was due to his parent or his grandparent becoming super mature? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So what that's telling you is that Joseph was real precocious in his Bible study. And of course, he ends up leading Egypt as second in the land, so he was real precocious as a result of having all that Bible in his head, which, you know, it was orally transmitted in those days. All that knowledge of God in his head at such an early age, it made him smart in other ways, and that's what Scripture does. People are always telling me how smart I am, and I, I you know, most of them don't believe in God the way I do, so I can't just sit there and say, hi, it's not my smarts. It's the Bible smarts. It makes me smart in other things because I, in order to know Bible, you got to be smarter. So Bible makes you smart in other things. My pastor liked to call that spiritual IQ, and it spills over into your secular life. Well, obviously it did this way for Joseph. So the 490 is based on him. Well, that's how come now there can be a Moses born 2586, 50 years after the 490 from Abraham runs out. Now you still got a thousand year protection, but you got to always fulfill the 490 or the thousand doesn't play. All right. Now that in itself is really important because there's a shift that occurs. This is our plan B now. There's a shift that occurs at the Exodus because again, you know, it's occurring after. It's a shift to, where is he? It's a shift to Joseph. 490 years is now a shift to what? To the people of Israel. The nation. There's a new 490 deadline. It's really based on Moses being mature at this time. Okay, but Moses pleads with God in Numbers 14. He says, blot me out of the book of life if you're going to destroy this people. And of course, God wanted him to say that, and he really wanted to say that. And so God assigned, as it were, Moses' own 490 to the whole nation. So the whole nation is given 490 years. And that deadline ends up being right here. When Moses' personal 490 runs out, which is ascribed to the nation of Israel, the temple gets it. The temple. The construction of the first temple. See, in order to understand why God's talking the way he is, in Daniel 9.24, about a 490-year credit, loan of time, you have to know all this backstory. And you'd know the backstory if you plotted the begats and you plotted all the dates in the Bible up to that point. All right, you'd know that. Oh, it's a second 490 for the temple. That's why Daniel doesn't ask the angel any questions. He's not shocked. Daniel's using the 490, this whole accounting system I'm showing you, he's using that as a meter for his own prayer. So then God replies in meter also using the 490. And the explicit numbers are based on 490. And people don't even know where they come from. Yeah, they don't know where they come from because they didn't. They didn't. They, they never do the calendar the way I'm showing you. They're always using some dear doctor so and so. They don't just rely on Bible. This is strictly using Bible dates, the way the Bible expresses them. Okay, and so now it's real clear. Oh, the temple gets dedicated. See, same year, at the very last minute by Solomon. Yeah. Because the 490 shifted to Joseph, and then it shifted to Moses, and because of Moses it shifts to Israel, and the symbol of Israel is her temple, and therefore it shifts to the temple, and therefore when the temple goes down, time is in jeopardy. And that's why Daniel prays for the temple to be started again. All right? 
But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself because in the interim, there had to be somebody else. And that somebody else is David. Now, there are a lot of timelines about David, and they're almost all wrong because they're not using the Bible. They're using somebody else. Okay? Saul became king. Notice this. Here's your 3,000 qualifying period. Who, who met that? Well, Abraham did. See? Abraham's personal 1,000 extended the deadline of the 1,000 to 3046. Somebody had to win the next 1,000 by 3046. Well, who was it? Well, let's see. It could have been Joseph. Could have been. After Abram. Okay, where are we going? We're, we're going to... There's the end of Noah's personal 1,000. You got Jacob. Could have been Jacob that he he matured and got the 1,000. Okay, because here's the end of Noah's 1,000. All right. Can't have been Moses because that's not until 2666. So it's somebody like could have been Jacob, could have been somebody else. We don't know. Or maybe we do know and it's in scripture, but I can't find it yet. All right, the point is that by 3046 after Adam's fall, somebody else won a 1,000. But, the, but they would have had to have won it by then. You, you see the point? Here's the contiguous 490 is ending in 2940. So somebody had to win it. We have the 490 continuing to 2666, so we don't worry about that because that was Joseph Joseph's extension. Joseph extends the deadline to 2666. But then what about after 2666? Who won it after? Well, you could say Moses did. You can say Moses won the next 490, which I'm assuming in this worksheet. Okay. You can also assume, if you want, that in 2666, Moses won a 1,000, which I'm also assuming. But it could have been somebody else. In any point, the deadline for that 1,000, the deadline for the 490 was here. You could say Moses won it in 2666. That's why he led the Exodus, because he got a special covenant from God. All right? And... Therefore, 2940 is covered because that's before 490. And then the 1,000 of Abraham ran out. And you can say, well, Moses would have gotten it until 3666, which is what I assume in the worksheet. But it could have been somebody else. Now, what does that do? That buys time for this boy to be born. His name is David. He was born 3066 from Adam's fall, which you can prove in Bible directly, but people don't pay attention to how the Bible's numbers work. And specifically, in 1 Kings 6.1, it tells you David would have been 80 years old. So he was born 400 years after the Exodus. David super matured by the time he was 30. Because he was granted to be the son, the, the progenitor of Messiah. So he had to win a 490, and he had to win a 1000. And frankly, when you track all the numbers, there are actually 490s dated from his Hebron kingship, which is highlighted here. See, same age, which is when he's 30 years old at this point. And it's also tracking from when he's king over all Israel. Now, that particular date, you know. Because Christ is going to have to be born a thousand years. So David got a thousand year time grant also. A thousand years later. Because the day of the Lord is a thousand years. So for Christ, the deadline of his birth changes from 4106 to 4103, a thousand years after this point. Because Christ has to be born a king. Okay, he's got to be born a king. So now you go back up here. I'm sorry to keep moving this around, but hopefully you're beginning to see how these numbers are fitting. That was when Abram super matured. It's 40, 54 years earlier than the 2100 allotted to the Goyim. 
So there's a 54-year credit owing them. But the new 2100 kicks off at 2046. So now, damn, I hate the way this mouse works. By the time, 2,000 years after Jacob's born, Christ would have had to have been born. And 2046, I mean 2146, is the deadline because of this. This is the new deadline because it's 54 years early. So it can't be 4200. It's got the time of the Jews has to end by 4146, and Christ has to be born by the 2000th anniversary of Jacob's birth. All right. But then when you come down here with the timing of what happened with David, David super matures, which is great because it's just in time for the 1000th end. All right. But at the same time, he's late here. He's late becoming king of all Israel because there's a seven-year civil war between the time in Israel. Israel was at civil war from when he's crowned at age 30 at Hebron to when he's king of all Israel at the end of 104 BC. I say 103 because the math works the same way. But it's really the end of 104 BC. So now Christ has to be born at a different date. This is our plan C. Christ has to be born at a different date. He has to be born by a thousand years after David's crowning so Christ can be born a king. So now the 54 year credit that was here gets, is, is increased all right, because of David's becoming king of all Israel, now we got extra three and a half years early that Christ has to be born. Not 4106 now, but 4103. And it's going to be Hanukkah because that's in Haggai too. And I'm not sure why Hanukkah was picked. It wasn't Hanukkah then. All right, it was 25 Kislev when they laid the foundation of the second temple. And it's like, why did they pick that date to lay the foundation of the second temple? So it has some date, that particular date is related to David somehow. And I'm not sure, was it his birthday? Was it when he was crowned over, king over all Israel or what? But the point is now it's 57 years early. This is where we're getting the peace for the tribulation. Okay, before... It was 50 years. Remember, we got this 50 thing going on in here. Between 3100, I can't show it all on the screen at once. 3100 was when the civilization, the third, the 3000 qualifying period ended. And then we got 3150. The, the in between is the voting period for the unbeliever. Okay. That period ends up um, being met because David became king. But at the same time, it's the same problem we got here. It's early because David is king before that deadline. Just like, I'm sorry about the movement. Just like Abram was 54 years early to get to 2050 and then 2100 because that's the unbeliever voting period. The same thing happens here with our boy David. All right. He was early before 3100. See, there's another four year early. Okay, it's really three and a half years. But to prove that, I'm, I'm going to have to find the scripture. It's going to be somewhere, but I just don't know where to look yet. The math is working out that way. Okay, so... He ends up being crowned, as it were, three years later, seven years later, but that is still before 3150. So we end up having, after all, you do the pluses and the minuses and the credits and the debits because there's, there's a seven-year debit here, and then you have to cancel it out with another thing that gets credited, blah, blah, blah. Bottom line is that we now have 57 years instead of 54 as our credit. So now you take 
leave that out because that's a different timeline. 3103 when David is crowned plus 1000. Christ has to be born by then. Okay, but that's 4103, not 4106. So if you were to add 40 for his lifetime, because that didn't change, that's 4143 is the deadline for Jewish time. And then now what's left over, and there's another reason for it I'll get to, now what's left over from 4200 when the millennium was supposed to start is 57 years. Okay? That's the, that, these are the books that are being kept in Scripture. And the meter tracks them all. And some of the verses track them too, but you have to know what you're looking for in order to see that. And I learned all this before I learned the meter. The meter makes it conclusive. All right, it won't be conclusive to you until you actually do the homework too, but it's conclusive in my mind because I've, I've done the homework. Okay, so that's the deadline. So now we come to Christ, and sure enough, he's born. Oh, I can't get this mouse to work. Ugh. Sorry. Maybe I shouldn't just use the mouse. I should just use this. He's born in 4103, which is exactly 1,000 years after David's personal 1,000, based on David's birth, because David has a 1,000 based on his birth, based on his kingship, based on his death, based on his um, two kingships, actually, one at Hebron and one at um, King over all Israel, which is what this one is designed to be the 1,000th anniversary of David's kingship over all Israel. You see, God's accounting the time. And so is John when he's doing this. All right? So the 1000s are contiguous. The 490s are contiguous. They also take into account whether or not they go past. Let's go all the way back to Adam. That's a 490 historical. That's a 70 historical. That's a 560 historical. But if someone during the 490 won a personal 490, it can extend the time like it does here with Adam. The same thing is true for the 1000. Because our boy Enoch, we have to say that he won a 1000. Okay, so that would take us to 1687, which is just past the flood. The flood occurs in 1656. Okay, so it's covered. But it wouldn't be covered if Noah, in 1556, didn't win a 490. And Noah couldn't have existed to win a 490 if it wasn't Methuselah who won a 490 twice. Because 1874 doesn't take you to 1556 if you add 490. So he had to win it a second time. Because he's the last guy alive. All right, you, you have Lamech. Okay, but see, he dies in 1651. And maybe he got a 490, but it would be measured from 1056, which is when Noah was born. Let's see, Noah was born here. Okay, well, that ain't going to take you far enough. Nobody else's 490s go far enough, and they all die before the flood, except for Methuselah. And that's when his 490, second 490, is terminated by his death. So it's really terminating even earlier, because he dies. But Noah, in the meantime, got developed. And you'll notice he's getting developed during the 70-year human voting period. This is the mass voting period, the 70 years, 1540 to 1610 from Adam's fall. Noah voted. He matured during that time. So time can go on. Same thing with Moses. Okay? Get to Moses. Couldn't have been a Moses if there wasn't a Jacob. Couldn't have been a Moses. Couldn't have been a Jacob. I mean, if there wasn't a Joseph. Couldn't have been a Joseph if there wasn't a Jacob. So you see, it's like a relay race. You're, you're running. You, you win the time award, and then you got to pass the baton to somebody else before your time runs out. And is there going to be somebody that's there to take the baton from you, the time baton? In this case, yeah, Moses. And how do we know that? Because here's 2590 to 2660. That's the seven-year voting window. And Moses 
leaves Egypt when he's 40. So he matured when he was 40. Joseph did by the time he was 17. Moses by the time he was 40. And then we come down to David. And David does it by the time he's 30. Or these time periods, these deadlines wouldn't exist. They would, they would just, we'd all be dead. There wouldn't be any future history. So you see, when it says in Galatians 4.4, 4, that Christ is the fullness of time. Now you know what he's talking about. Okay? I can't get this. I don't know why I can't get this mouse to work. Christ is the fullness of time. That's why he had to be born 4103. Now his death deadline was supposed to be 41... 40... Ah, 43. Because he was supposed to live 40 years. That again is in the Talmud itself. And that, that's part of the schedule didn't change from Abram to Moses to David. He still had 40 years allotted to him, but he doesn't die in 4143, which is the thousandth anniversary of David's death. No, Christ ends up dying 4136 when he is 33. Seven years early. Seven years early. You see that? Now, if I, I hope I've been clearer. Or I hope this makes sense that you can see that these timelines interlock. All right, there's there's series of deadlines. You got 490, 490, 490, 490. Then you got 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. Each one of those iterations, somebody's got a super mature, and the super maturation required to get a 1,000 is obviously higher than for the 490. At the same time, the year you get it can extend the deadline beyond the 490 scheduled ending. But the 490 scheduled ending is based on the actual history, which is 490 plus 70 plus 490 equals 1050. And there were two 1050s allotted to the Gentiles, two 1050s allotted to the Jews, but then our boy... Abram matured 54 years early, which he had to do because Noah's personal 490 was running out. So because he did, the new 2100 for the Jews starts 54 years early. So time cannot end and the millennium begin at the schedule 4200. That's the first change. The second change is that instead of being born 2000 years after Jacob, Christ is going to have to be born um, one thousand years after David is crowned king over all Israel because that's its own one thousand year deadline. David gets a, a, a one thousand year time grant that's based on him being king over all Israel. Day of the Lord. See, this is the significance it has in the Bible. I wish people would cover it this way. But they don't know these dates because they didn't plot them. You don't need to know the Bible meter that I've been talking about the last eight years to know these dates. But the Bible meter confirms every single thing I've told you. That's the shocking thing to me. Because as soon as I got these dates, I, I did all this in like 2004, 10, 14 years ago now, right? It's 2017, 13 years ago. I learned all this just from the, the Bible dates. But I said to God, I said, well, I need proof in Scripture. And there were like a handful, maybe 20, 30, 40 verses that fit what I was plotting as far as the, the meaning of the 490 and the 70 and the 1000. I wanted more proof than that. And so in 2008, 10 years ago almost, I learned of the meter in Isaiah 53, then Psalm 90, then Daniel 9, and then um, Ephesians 1, and then the Magnificat, and then I, then I found it in Genesis 1 and all the NT books. They all use a meter based on this time schedule that I'm showing you, every one of them. Now, I haven't covered every single book in the Bible and every chapter in the Bible. But you can pick any chapter you want once you know these numbers and count the syllables and see where it fits for you. Look at the prophetical passages 
in Old Testament or New. They use the same scheduling. Every, the, you know, the 70 that I've done in my videos. Just look for that. You'll find it in any passage you want to look at that's prophetical. And, in, and sometimes it'll be in the history. So maybe it's in Kings, but it's historical, not prophetical. This is how they account time. This is why they account it that way. They're checking for the deadlines. Were things done by the deadline? Like, for example, when you get to Daniel 9, the temple is destroyed 126 years before it was supposed to end. It had a 490-year time grant, remember? Okay, the temple was dedicated 3156. So it had its own 490, not, not a human being anymore. Well, David's 490s continue. 490 plus 3156 is 3646 was when it was supposed to end. But instead, because of apostasy, it ends 3520. Okay, so 3520. There's your 126 that's in Daniel 9, 920, what is it, 926. It's 49 plus 70, and then the last 7 is in Daniel 927. This is where it comes from. And Isaiah 53 meters his Hebrew syllable counts to this accounting. And I showed you that in the Isaiah 53 channel in Vimeo. So you see, it's all over the Bible. We just haven't known about it. And the reason we haven't known is because the scholars mess up the math. They, they, they say David died at 70. No, the Bible says he died at 77. Okay? And, and they mess up the way of the accounting of a year. They use lunar years. No, it's solar. All right? So you miss all of these connections with the numbers. And specifically, you miss why there's a rapture. There's a rapture because Christ is dying seven years early than scheduled. So all the other debits and credits, except for the 54-year credit from Abraham, got paid off. But now this extra seven is there. All right? So that's why church started. Because there's a seven-year timeout. Because Christ was supposed to be 40 when he died. But he's 33 when he dies. So there's a seven-year timeout. So church is to bridge time to the tribulation. So that the Abrahamic credit can finish, and the 300 and the 3.5 year early thing that's due to David can finish. I mean, there's more to the story than I'm telling you, because I'm I'm trying to keep this short and simpler. But this is why all of this is accounted in the Bible, and the scholars don't know. Now, if the Jews figured this out, they'd believe in Christ by the millions. Because you can track this yourself. You don't need to be a scholar. <coughs> you just need to be able to count syllables. And it's the same accounting method in the Old Testament New. So I'm going to stop there. And now we're going to go back to John.